What's up guys? Welcome to the Ask Nick Foy community and my channel Nick Foy TV here on YouTube. I want to say thank you first of all to the 201 subscribers that I currently have. I just crossed over the 200 subscriber milestone today so I'm pretty excited about that. YouTube is something that I was neglecting for a while in my online business. I was focused on Instagram and on Pinterest and on just blogging. So recently I started putting out daily videos. So as you can see here, I've got daily videos helping you build an online business. That's what this channel is about. So every single day you're going to find a new video. So here's a couple recent videos that I just put out how to make 30,000 a month using Pinterest, how to make 100 grand a year online, how to make 10 grand a month online. So these are different you know, strategy videos that'll walk you through how to do the math to make a full-time income online. Today's video is gonna be talking about how long does it take to make a full-time income online. So to help you kind of get an idea of how long it should take, I wanna give you a little bit of a timeline of my online business. So it starts off back in 2014, almost three years ago. Right now it's August 2017. I got started at first with a golf brand called Golf Practice Guides. And my very first product I sold and made my first income was on Amazon. I wrote a little ebook, put it up for sale on Amazon, and it began selling you know, right away pretty much. And then it wasn't until about four or five, six months later, I got a check in the mail from Amazon because you had to, I think, reach a certain threshold before they would send out a check. So eventually I hit that threshold and they mailed me a check. It was for a couple hundred dollars and I had forgotten all about that ebook. So I got on my Amazon Kindle publishing account and saw that I'd been doing sales over the past several months. That got me hype in that fall of 2014. So I went ahead and built a website. That way I could try to you know, grow an audience, grow traffic that I could then promote that ebook to. And Amazon was taking like 30% fees every sale and they were controlling my pricing. If I wanted to price it above $10, they were gonna take 70% of the sales. So by having my own website, I was able to control my pricing, control my fees better and retain more profit. So that's when I launched golfpracticeguides.com in that fall of 2014 and basically spent every day blogging and building the site, you know, designing web pages. And then finally in that spring, I launched these golf practice plans and I created three different plans, breaking 70, breaking 80, breaking 90. So it's all the stuff that I used in high school to help me, you know, break 70 so I was a scratch golfer I was shooting under par scores I was winning tournaments so it was real easy for me to relay all of my knowledge on the sport of golf to other people so I created these different programs started charging I think 37 or 40 bucks a program since then I've raised the price up to $99 for one of these programs or right now I'm running a sale where they could get all three for a cheap price so that's the next step after the ebook. I moved on to selling these practice plans, which are my staple products. And then since then, I've created a whole golf store that's got you know all kinds of products. It's got bundles, training plans, worksheets, more ebooks. You know, we get into the mental game, high school golf coaching. So I've gotten a lot more diverse with my product lines, and that's helped earn you know additional streams of revenue. So now my store as a collective whole is doing thousands of dollars per month. And in order to get to that point, though, you know I had to spend a couple years, pretty much not being known really in the golf niche. I was just creating lots of content, you know, blogging every single week. And now I've got you know over a hundred blog posts on my blog. I was publishing about one a week. There was even some periods of time where I stopped blogging for you know a one month or two month period because I started working on my under 30 wealth brand. So now finally, a couple years later, I started seeing significant traffic start coming in 2016. So about a year and a half later, that's when my Instagram account started growing for my golf brand. So it grew up to about 28,000, almost 30,000 followers at one time. And a lot of that traffic was coming through from my Instagram posts, clicking the link in my bio, sending them back to my website. 
and you know different times I would promote my email landing page to get people onto my email list and now I'm getting almost 500 subscribers per month there was a one month where I did cross over 500 I got 535 in a 30 day period so for a while I was getting you know 100 to 150 subscribers per month a lot of that was coming through that Instagram link and then I was also promoting my shop link as you can see here so that was sending traffic back to this store page that I've got and that was eventually that started drawing me an in income in early 2016 so it took about a year and a half of just blogging creating content creating courses creating products you know getting all of my content and site designed and set up the way I wanted it to and then finally it was all ready to go so once traffic started coming all my systems were in place and you know I had the proper funnel set up to funnel people through my website through my email list down to my products where they were ready to buy and that produced sales so it took a while to get it all set up I was learning the ropes once I had it all figured out though then I started my second brand under 30 wealth.com which is in a different niche this one's about real estate investing personal finance so here they can learn about stocks real estate investing starting a business taxes you know passive income so this is a personal finance niche and this website got up and running a lot quicker because now I had the web design skills that I acquired from spending lots of hours trying to design this website so this website I designed it real quick wrote tons of blog articles created courses you know set up email opt-in incentives and started growing an email list, pretty much replicating the whole process that I went through with my golf brand so then this brand started producing income as well I've got you know a store set up for it where I sell four courses right now and then I've got a fifth one coming out that's gonna be a big $500 real estate investing course that's gonna share you know all about my success in real estate and how I got started and it's gonna teach other people how they can get started so I've already done a couple deals that have six-figure profits in them I've already bought an apartment complex at age 22 and you know that's the type of articles I'm writing over here on the under 30 wealth website then they're gonna link to you know my course page where they can then take my real estate course so this is kind of a beginner's course for 200 bucks but my new course coming out is gonna be hosted on teachable which is where I host a lot of my courses so here I've got different online business courses how to start WordPress site how to start you know getting traffic from Pinterest convert kit which is the email company I use and then I've got a couple personal finance and stock market courses so here's where my real estate course will go and again all these blog posts are gonna send people to my email list and then my email list is gonna have sequences set up that send them to my course page where they become students and enroll in my courses so not only am I going to be earning thousands from this brand but the money I'm currently earning from under 30 wealth is going to quickly double triple quadruple once that course comes out because I'm going to have lots of people enrolling in it and then I've got you know my third brand I started once I saw success with these first two brands then I got started with the ask Nick Foy brand which now just teaches you know people what I did to be successful online so I teach people how to start a blog you know in seven days and then I've got a full article on how to start a blog I've got tons of YouTube videos so if you come over here to the YouTube channel you know you're gonna find lots and lots of videos I'm even setting up playlists right now that you know get real specific so I've got all these different playlists if you want to find about specific topics so I'm creating all of this content for you guys on the Ask Nick Foy brand now to share everything that I did that I learned all my experiences building my golf brand and my real estate brand and getting those successful you know producing thousands of dollars per month in income and the Ask Nick Foy brand is where you guys are here today trying to learn all those things so that's all happened in the last two and a half years again to recap my timeline each of these brands you know for the first year I probably didn't earn any income this one I actually started earning a little bit of income in the first six months because I I got my products launched you know my ebook I got launched right away so that was earning a little bit of income and then once I got these launched about month six month seven in the springtime because I started this in the fall of 2014 by spring of 2015 I launched these three plans 
and I'd already built up a decent Instagram following. So they were ready for the launch. And I had a small email list as well of subscribers here. I had, I think, a couple hundred subscribers at the time. So everybody started buying, you know, from Instagram and from my email list that I had already. And that helped produce some income. So you can start making money, I would say, right away in month one if you really try. I didn't start making good money. We're talking, you know, thousands of dollars per month until after two years of running my brand. So the first couple years, you're going to make, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month here and there. And then it starts getting more consistent, starts building. And eventually, you know, in 2016, about a year and a half in, I saw my first month where I made over a thousand dollars. And then the rest of the year, it kind of kept growing. And then here in 2017, I've gotten to the point where I'm making, you know, three, four, five, six thousand dollars per month from this golf brand online. And then I started, you know, like I said, my under 30 wealth brand. It didn't make much money right away. I just really focused on producing lots of free content, lots of value, building an audience. So then once I started building that email list, building an audience, then I started releasing courses after the first year and now you know in late 2016 because this got started in the summer of 2015 when i was down in miami florida for an internship i had some free time on the weekends so i worked on building this website out about a year later in the summer slash fall of 2016 that's when this brand really started to take off you know by then i had a hundred and some blog posts published i was active on instagram so i had almost you know, seven, 8,000 followers, I think at that point. And then I had built up an email list as well for this brand. So then I started launching courses and replicating the same process, you know, building a couple hundred dollars per month in income. And then it started growing, growing to where now today in 2017, I'm making decent money from this brand. And then it's going to continue to grow once I get that big $500 course launched. And I continue to scale up my Pinterest traffic that I'm sending to my website. So that's a little timeline for you that you can start making money right away, but expect to put in the grind for at least a year or two before you start seeing good money. I would say set like a three year timeline by year three. If you're, if you're not making a full time income yet, or you're not even close at that point, you may consider, you know, not quitting your job, keeping your job and, you know, either find a new new website idea to start or a new business idea or make some major changes to your current business because something's not working if you're at three years you know you spent 36 months grinding away at your business there's got to be some reason why you're not seeing success yet so i would set a three-year time horizon be patient you know don't expect to make a full-time living in your first year i didn't start seeing success until after year two for one of my brands and then, you know, after year one for my other brand, because I was able to replicate the same process a lot quicker. So that's just my timeline. There's other people out there who can do things a lot quicker. You know, there's a lot of tools and softwares. You might be able to start making good income now with Facebook ads in month, you know, three or four. It might take you a few months to get going, but maybe your first six months using Facebook ads and Pinterest, you might be able to scale your business quickly. It's going to be a different scenario for every single person. So I just want to caution against, you know, having too big of expectations. Instead, be patient, give yourself a long term goal, you know, a three to five year goal. And if it doesn't work out after three to five years, then, you know, it was a little bit of wasted time, but at least you were, it, it was worth it. You know, at least you took action. You tried because you could have been that person that sat back and, you know, decided not to do it because you didn't think it was going to work. And then it could, you could be missing out on, you know, what if it did work? So at least take action, you know, grind for three years. After three years, if things aren't going yet, then maybe consider revising your strategy or giving up. But I would at least give yourself a longer term period horizon and not try to expect things to happen in your first few months. So that's just my realistic perspective from experience, you know, what I think would work. But it, obviously it could go a lot quicker for you. So going over all the different stuff now. So like I said, I've got these three different websites here that I'm public about. I've got some other niche sites that I'm working on that I'm not going to disclose because I don't want to attract competition. Uh, but in the golf niche, you know, I've already broken in and made it kind of to the top. I've got one of, you know, the top Instagram accounts that has a lot of followers. 
Uh, I've got a lot of articles ranking in the top 10 on Google, so they rank on the first page of Google, which sends me traffic. And I've got a lot of pins that are ranking really high on Pinterest that's sending me you know, thousands and thousands of visitors per month back to my website and back to my store. And then I've got you know the Under 30 Wealth brand. That one's still up and coming, but it's making good pace. And then the Ask Nick Foy brand. So these are my three websites. Then here we've got Pinterest. So this is the main traffic source that I'm using to drive traffic to my websites. So I think when we're talking about timeline of success, I probably would have been successful a lot quicker if I would have started using Pinterest sooner. Pinterest, I didn't start using it until this year in 2017. So when you were listening to my timeline earlier, I got started on Instagram with my golf brand, which ended up being a smart move because I was able to get a lot of email subscribers and a lot of course sales off Instagram. But eventually, you know, it became a limiting factor as social media has adapted and evolved. Instagram never has allowed links in their posts. They only allow a link in your profile bio until recently where they're now allowing links in the My Story feature. So that's made Instagram kind of come back relevant for bloggers trying to link to different blog articles, product pages, YouTube videos. So Instagram's starting to do some changes, but I ended up getting away from Instagram, moving on to Pinterest eventually in 2017 because Pinterest is all about you know, creating these pins, which are just pictures. So I'll go ahead and go out to my profile and show you an example. But basically every pin you upload is just like uploading a post on Instagram. It's, it's still a picture, but it lets you link it to your website. So here I've got different pictures that I've manually created on Canva. So like this one I figured was gonna go viral, the hottest female golfers, uh, how to break 70 in golf. So this is a product pin that takes them back to that breaking 70 product I sell. I've got my putting course I sell on Teachable. And then I've got you know some blog posts that I've written. So I create these different pins for each of my blog posts or my products, upload them to Pinterest, and they link. So when I click this link, for example, to my product page, it's gonna take them back to my sales page where then they can learn about my product and it's gonna push them then to the cart page where they can check out and buy my product. So that's one of the cool features of why I moved over to Pinterest because you can actually upload photos that link to things, whereas Instagram doesn't allow it yet when you post photos other than their My Story feature. And so starting using Pinterest in February for my golf brand, and I pretty much went from zero to 100,000 monthly viewers, and that started sending thousands of people to my website, but that took four months to get it going. It started speeding up, you know, month one, then month two was kind of flat, month three and four started going, and then here in month five, it finally took off exponential. So 100,000 is what it took four months to hit. Well, then I doubled it to 200,000 in like half a month, and then at the end of the month, I was almost up to 300,000. So I went from 100,000 up to almost 300,000 within a one month span, nearly tripling you know, my reach and that started sending my traffic to my website spiking and that's what started causing my email subscriber spikes. So I started getting above 10 subscribers per day. Some days I was getting 20, 30, 40, even 60 subscribers. And now, you know, like you can see here, I pretty much started focusing on my under 30 wealth brand to get it going on Pinterest, which I'll show you that graph in a moment. But when I started putting all my focus into that brand, I started neglecting this brand. So it's been declining and that has resulted in my email subscribers kind of staying flat. It's still hovering around 400 a month, but at one time I had it up to 535 per month. So right now, you know, these this is growing on autopilot still for my email list for my golf brand without me really out there actively promoting pins on Pinterest. When I was promoting pins on Pinterest, it started you know, spiking traffic. And by promoting pins on Pinterest, I don't mean their, their ads. I don't use any ads. This is all free traffic I'm getting. So what I mean is at one point in June, I created probably 50, 60 different pins for all of my articles. So I went in and created a couple pins for all my different golf articles, and I started manually posting them. And so all those new pins that I was posting started sending lots of different traffic back. But in the whole month of July, I didn't create any pins at all. 
So here in August, I gotta get back creating more pins for all my new articles that have posted. So when I scroll down here, I've got you know the longest golf drive, how to hit a fade. These are all new articles that have been posting to my blog that I haven't created pins for yet. So I gotta catch up, you know, start creating pins for those blog posts and pinning them to Pinterest, and that'll start getting those blog posts traffic, and you'll start seeing you know my traffic spiking back up again. So that's what this was here when I mean promoted my pins. I just was actively pinning lots of pins for all my different blog posts and that's why all of a sudden my traffic started spiking because I got active. Here it was kind of on autopilot just growing on its own. I was pinning every once in a while but I saw when I started pinning a lot more that started causing that exponential spike. So what I started doing then in July when this started declining was I started focusing on my under 30 wealth brand. So here you can see about mid June, you know, I started out at like zero. By about mid June, I started really pumping out pins for my under 30 wealth brand. And then all of July, I was promoting pins, you know, uploading pins every day for all my different blog posts. And that's how I hit 100,000 viewers seeing my pins in August, early August, which was about a month and a half later from the middle of June to the beginning of August. So a month and a half goes by, I hit 100,000. Whereas my golf brand, it took you know almost four months to get to that 100,000 viewer mark. So I thought that was pretty cool that I was able to replicate the success a lot quicker. Uh, but again, a lot of the success was because I was heavily promoting in June and July for this brand, and I was heavily promoting in June for my golf brand. So that's why the big spikes were happening for both of these brands. And then now, you know, I've kind of gotten away from being active on Pinterest. I've been focusing on building courses and, you know, getting my Teachable account all set up so that when my real estate course launches to Teachable, it's all, you know, ready to go to collect sales. So there's other parts of online business that take your focus away. It's hard to manage it all. You know, you've got to write blog posts. You've got to publish stuff on social media. You've got courses you've got to write you've got to write emails for your email sequences so there's so many different parts to online business that that's why i think it takes you know a couple years to get going if you're trying to do it all by yourself but eventually once you get everything all set up all your systems set up all the content created eventually you get traffic going through your systems and you start seeing success so i think this gives you a, a more clear more realistic expectation of how much work it's gonna to take to get your online business going, and you know some of the tools you can use to speed up the process. I wish I would have started using Pinterest, you know, back in 2015, 2016. Instead, I didn't start using it till 2017, and that's when all this massive amount of traffic started coming, and you know my website sales went from you know a couple hundred bucks, couple thousand bucks, and now it started growing exponentially due to all this traffic coming from Pinterest. Same with my email list, you know, all this traffic started coming. So if we go to the last three months, you'll see, you know, over time, my email list started surging, 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 and now it's kind of leveled off, like I said, on autopilot, just manually growing on its own without me messing with it. So that's, you know, Instagram, we talked about Pinterest. These are my two main social media sites that I use to grow my traffic, grow my sales to my products. And then I've got my different store pages that I set up. So these took a while to build, you know, build all these products for three different brands. I built all these golf products, all these real estate, personal finance products. And now I've built all these online business products, teaching people how to start a website, how to get it all set up, you know, how to use Pinterest, how to use ConvertKit. So all these products, these all took a lot of time too. So while my attention was focused on building these, I started then, you know, neglecting social media or I would be neglecting blog posts. So it's hard to manage it all, which is why I recommend, you know, picking one brand, one topic to focus on, build it up, become successful at it first. That's what I did. I built my golf brand first. Once it was successful, then I moved on to my second and third brands and started replicating and duplicating, building these brands but there's no way I could have managed all three at the same time at the beginning. You know, I had this brand pretty much going, pretty much established before I started worrying about the other two brands and starting those. 
And then, you know, once Under 30 Wealth got going, then I started asking Nick Foy. And then now I've got these three all set up. You know, I've got courses for all of them. So we've got these three different course pages. I've got YouTube channels for both brands. So now that these are all established, I've started working on a couple other brands behind the scenes that, like I mentioned, I can't share publicly because I don't want to attract, you know, all the competition. There would be a lot of people starting websites in those same niches. And I'm doing some experience, experiments with affiliate marketing in those niches and Facebook ads to see what works. So I'll be doing eventually some case studies and showing you those once you know I feel comfortable releasing it to the public. But right now, I've got some other brands behind the scenes I'm working on. So if you want, you know, you could check out all these websites to kind of get an idea of what they look like, you know, how many blog posts they have. You can check out my Pinterest accounts, my Instagram accounts, which is just golf practice guides and under 30 wealth. Uh, and then I've got my two YouTube channels. So Ask Nick Foy, which is the Nick Foy TV brand. That's all about online business, you know, how to make money online. And then I've got the under 30 wealth brand, which is all about real estate investing. So how to use Zillow, how to buy, you know, real estate in seven steps, how to value apartments. So this channel I just started. Uh, publishing every day and I started growing some subscribers so I'm up to 55 this channel I also just started publishing every day and I've grown up to 200 subscribers so these are still new you know like I said I started working on Instagram then I started working on Pinterest now I'm working on YouTube and kind of working on Pinterest trying to drive Pinterest traffic to my YouTube channels to get me more subscribers so I'm kind of doing a mix of things, trying to build just a big community on all these different platforms because all these different subscribers and followers on social media eventually will get funneled to my email list and then they'll get funneled to the course pages where they can become you know, premium members of my community where they're paid members, paid customers. They get access to private Facebook groups and you know, then they can engage with other members of the private Facebook groups and engage with me you know, one-on-one. -on -one. So that's a good summary video. I think we pretty much hit everything today on, you know, the timeline. I've been able to build all three of these brands, all these social media accounts, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, building an email list, building the websites, building all the courses and products. All of this has taken almost three years to build. So that's what I'm saying. It's a long-term game as far as your timeline. If you're focusing on just one brand, you can obviously get it going in less than a year, get it successful. Uh, then I started, you know, brands two and brands three thereafter. So three years of progress, three years of work has contributed to all of this. It didn't happen overnight. So don't expect any type of get rich quick scheme. It's, you know, this takes a lot of man hours. There were many nights that I was up until, you know, two, three, four a.m. in college. Luckily, a lot of this happened in college when I had a lot of free time in between classes right now working a full-time job you know selling real estate plus investing in real estate plus trying to come home at night and keep building my online brands it's a lot to manage so thankfully i got a lot of these started while i was in college and i had a lot of free time on my hands uh, but for the average person who's working a full-time job aim to spend about three to four hours per night if you can come home and get started at 6 6 30 in the night time and go till you know 10 11 o'clock and then go to bed go to work the next day come home repeat do that you know you'll be able to spend about 20 30 hours a week on your side hustle building your online business and if you use a lot of different tools i've got asknickfoy.com over here the resources uh, there's a bunch of guides here checklists or tools and tech if you come to this page you're going to learn about different softwares and tools that i use in my business to try to automate things so, for example, you can have social media schedulers that schedule your pins on Pinterest. Um, you can have, you know, Buffer, Hootsuite. Those are social media tools that help you schedule out your Facebook, Instagram posts, things like that. That way you don't have to worry about managing your social media. You can set up a bunch of posts to get scheduled ahead of time and that will auto-publish for you. Um, and then you can use other tools, you know, like Bluehost is who I use for hosting Convert Kits, who I use to manage my email subscribers. Uh, Genesis is the theme that I use. Optin Monster is who I use for my lead capture forms, so I can design good-looking opt-in forms to get people onto my email list. And then I've got all kinds of other stuff down here, so like 
keyword research for blog posts, analytics, how to track you know your traffic, uh, WordPress plugins I use, video equipment I use, audio equipment for making different courses. If you're gonna use, you know, Teachable is a good platform for selling courses. So to build your courses, you'll need that audio equipment that's on my resource page here. Uh, it'll, you know, teach you about microphones and setting up your studio, you know, getting backdrops and lighting kits, uh, different microphones, different video cameras. So check all these resources out. They'll be helpful for building courses. And then Teachable is who I use to host my courses. So this is where students come to this page. They click on a course like my Pinterest course. They can enroll for $97 and become a student. It'll show them, you know, about the course and then it gets into curriculum. You know, it shows them all the lessons they're getting in the course. So it's, it's a pretty cool platform for being an, a course teacher or a course author and getting students to enroll. They handle all the payment processing for you. So it goes through Stripe and PayPal. There's like 3% transaction fees and then the rest of that money gets deposited into your account and you, you know, you're making a full-time living eventually once you get it selling enough courses. But it all starts by having a website, getting traffic to that website by using Pinterest or if you want to go Instagram route. But Pinterest is going to speed up your traffic growth as you saw here and then getting them onto your email list and then starting an email sequence that pitches them your product and eventually they buy your products. So thanks for watching today's video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. I upload every single day. Turn on notifications and you'll be notified when tomorrow's video is live. And again, I hope this video was helpful. And if you get started, set your goals, set a three to five year timeline, focus on one brand. Don't try to spread yourself out building multiple websites. Focus on one brand, build a couple key products and then later on you can build more and more products but start off promoting one or two products that way all your focus goes into selling that one course that one product and eventually you can diversify by building more products and you know just aim for a three to five year timeline thanks for watching see you guys tomorrow